start by coming into child's pose. So we're going to bring the big toes close to one another, knees wide. And from there, if you can feel your sitting bones grounding towards the heels, it doesn't matter if they don't touch. And then see if you can take some giant steps with your hands, mainly to add more elongation to the sides of your body and let the chest move down. It does not have to happen that your chest touches down. You're gonna let your forehead come down towards the floor, towards your mat. And if the head is not touching easily onto the floor, you can always add blocks, pillows, blankets, anything that you have at home that may be helpful to release the weight there. So in this simple yet effective posture, as we start, we notice the contact of your flesh with your mat, the parts that are touching, let them drop and start breathing through your nose if this is possible today. We call it Ujjayi breath. And it is the opportunity to breathe with a type of breath that feels a little bit like a humming sound, not a strong sound, but perhaps you can hear your own breath moving in and out of your body. Notice if there's any tension or any area that feels a little bit tight. Just notice, kind of like taking notes so you know how to adjust the practice for yourself today, okay? Another breath before we move into another shape. And then from there, slowly, I'm going to walk with my hands back towards <clears throat> the seat that I had. Now I'm going to show you a different type of sitting. This one may be a little bit intense, so you're going to adjust it if you need, okay? I'm going to tuck my toes. I usually spread my toes when I do that. And I have my heels pretty close to one another, so I can sit with my sitting bones on top of my heels. Now, this is something that it's not usual. We don't do this often, so it may feel pretty intense. If this is the case for you, I usually suggest to my students to have a block or something that you can put in between your heels and your sitting bones. And this will soften the sensation, but it will start activating the blood moving through the back chain of your body, legs, and everything will start to be ignited. If you can hold it for a little bit, we're going to stay there. If you feel at any point that you need to shift the weight of your body forward so you release a little bit of the uh, weight from the heels or the toes, then you come forward, okay? What I'm going to do here as you can, and of course you untuck the toes if you need, is to bring the arms in front. I'm going to lace the fingers and press my palms away from my chest. From here, I'm going to inhale, send the arms up, press through the palms up towards the skies. It's a little bit of an arch, as you can see in my spine. With the exhale, I'm rounding chin in and widening the upper back. And then again, inhaling and exhale. Two more. When I'm inhaling, I'm trying to lengthen the sides, open the chest lift my chin just a little bit. And with the exhale, I'm really trying to expand the back of my heart, push with my palms and bring my belly button in. Last one, inhaling. Exhale. Good, from there I'm releasing, coming into a tabletop, untucking the toes, wiggle the feet, tap a little bit through the tops of the feet if you need to regain sensation there in the feet if they were a little bit too um, ignited, right? And then from here, keeping my tabletop, hands are right under my shoulders, pelvis is right above my, uh, above my knees. I'm going to swing a little bit front and back just a few times to start to feel my wrist joints, my shoulder joints, my hip joints, knee joints. And of course you can choose if you want to tuck your toes again, you can do that or you can keep the tops of the feet down, okay? So I'm just moving a few times back and forth. Just two, three more here. 
remember to always check in with your breath, okay? We try to keep it fluid, moving in a, in a steady manner, okay? Good, I'm coming back to the tabletop and now I'm going to extend my right leg, curl the toes under, push through the right heel. And again, I'm going to go a few times, just coming back and forth. Now I'm working also with my ankle joint a little more, trying to stretch the Achilles tendon and then back. Good, and when you come back to the tabletop, so I'm more of a, in a neutral position, I'm going to draw the navel in and lengthen all the way to the nose. I'm going to keep that right foot as it is. And now I'm also going to tuck my left toe. So the other side, I'm going to curl the toes under. I'm going to press the mat firmly and I'm going to lift my left knee one hair off the floor just one hair, lengthen through the crown of the head, take a deep breath in, long exhale, and then you bring that left knee down, right knee comes back and we wiggle the hips a little bit side to side. Notice sensation in the sensations in the outer hips. You can do a few little circles there. And we are back to our tabletop and we are going to reverse it. So now I'm going to extend the left leg back, curl the toes, and I'm going to play a little bit with pushing back and coming forward to stretch the Achilles tendon. Notice also the engagement in the leg, the muscles firing more. And then as I come back into the tabletop, I'm firming my hips into the midline drawing the lower belly in and forward. And then I'm going to tuck my right toes. I'm going to push the floor away, lift my right knee one hair off the mat and lengthen through the spine. Take a deep inhalation, long steady exhale, then bring it down and bring the left knee back to the tabletop. And again, we wiggle one more time. Good, from here I'm moving again. I'm moving my knees now a few inches behind my pelvis. So it's a little further back, so it's not so short. And now I'm going to tuck both my set of toes. And the same thing we did with one knee at the time, we are going to try and do it again, but with both knees. So the idea is that my torso is doing like what we call a plank pose, but I'm just going to lift both my knees one inch or maybe even less off the mat, okay? So we keep the core really fired up, lengthening from the lower belly to the nose, tucking the toes, and we lift those knees off the floor. You see that it's like almost nothing. You cannot even see it, right? It's just like one hair. Lengthen and breathe. And from here, I'm going to start pushing my hips up towards the skies. I'm doing a big, big flexion in my hip creases and sending my sacrum up towards the skies, as you can see, okay? So I'm doing that first. It's more or less similar to what we call a puppy pose, but I'm elevating it a little bit more towards the downward facing dog. So press firmly through your hands, lengthen the side body. Let the neck drop and the head become heavy. And then from there, I want you to start walking or pedaling your legs. Slowly, I'm going one at a time. So I'm giving time to each leg for the muscles to engage more, hugging the flesh into the bones. And again, inviting the pelvis to go really high up almost like if you want to prop it up towards the skies, okay? Taking a few breaths here. If you need to keep uh, pedaling a few times, do so. If you are okay without pedaling, then you find more stillness there. Good. Let's go from here. I'm going to inhale, send my right leg up to the skies. Then I'm going to bring the right foot forward in between the hands. I'm going to squeeze through my inner legs and then slowly come into what we call a high crescent. 
if this is too much, you can always have your left knee down and stay here and it's absolutely fine, okay? If you are more lifted, <clears throat> lift from the pubic bone up to your nose, bend the back knee a little bit so you help the sacrum go down, lengthen through the sides, opening the chest. Take one inhalation here, bending the front knee. Good, then I'm going to bring my hands down slowly, follow my lead, and I'm going to bring my back knee outside my right ankle. What does that mean that I'm doing this? I'm bringing that leg forward and I'm putting that left knee to the right so I can slowly come to a seat. It may be a little bit tricky, but test it and adjust it as you need, okay? Now, when you're sitting here, my right foot is over to the left. If the underside, the left leg feels too tight, you can always extend, I'm pushing, extend that leg and stay seated like this, okay? Maybe that will help you feel like you're more seated tall, okay? If this one is okay, you're gonna stay here. Left arm is going to wrap that right leg and I'm going to take my right hand behind me so I can use this shape to twist, okay? Elongate the spine. If you were here earlier, I said head above heart, heart above pelvis. So we always try to line up those three. And if your neck feels okay, you can turn the chin over to the right. Breathing here. Then I'm coming back, a little trick to return to where we were. I'm going to try and use a little bit of core to move myself forward, press. And then from there, walk back to down dog. From down dog, if you got there already, take a deep breath. Then we are going to do another little trick, inhaling to plank. Exhale, bend the knees like if you want to touch the mat, but don't touch like we did before. Inhale, push again into plank. Exhale to down dog. Let's do this again. Inhaling plank. Exhale, a hair off the mat. Inhale, extend through the heels. Exhale, down dog. And again, inhaling to plank. Exhale, knees down. Inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale to plank. Don't drop your hips, just the knees. Then back up. Downward facing dog. Ah, good. One big breath here. Exhale, release. Make sure that your palms are firmly holding your mat, fingertips gripping. Let's go with the left side. Left leg goes up to the skies. Left foot comes forward. I'm squeezing or firming my inner legs into the midline and then coming up into my high crescent. Bend the front knee, bend the back knee a little bit, lift the pubic bone, lengthen the sides. Let's take a nice, long, steady breath. Then I'm slowly touching down, bringing my right knee now behind the left ankle over to the left so I can sit again. Okay, take your time, no worries. If this is not happening, just engineer the seat, okay? Remember that right leg, you can extend it if you need, okay? Now with my right arm, I'm going to wrap my left leg, send my left hand behind and turn the belly and the chest over to the left. Chin also, unless that doesn't feel good, you stay at the center. Okay, let's notice the breath again here. Then I'm slowly returning. Again, I'm going to use my core, pushing and trying to go back to that downward facing dog. From there, I'm coming into plank. This time, I'm going to move all the way down to the mat. You can use your knees first to come all the way down if you cannot come all the way through a chaturanga. Then I'm going to widen my fingertips right outside my mat, more or less at the line of my shoulders. And I'm pressing with my fingertips at the same time that I'm pushing with the tops of my feet. I'm going to squeeze my glutes, lift my pubic bone, press the floor, 
and lift the side body, opening the chest and the heart. So I'm sending my shoulders back instead of rounding, okay? Lengthen the heart up, breathe in. Exhale, release. Bring the hands under the shoulders, tuck your toes, push into a tabletop. We are going to keep the toes tucked and I want you to push back like if you're going into a child's pose for one full breath. And then we go up into downward facing dog. Good, inhaling here. Exhale. Good, let's go again from here. Now I'm going to inhale right leg up to the skies. Right foot comes forward in between the hands. For the next one, you may need blocks or any support under your hands. I'm showcasing here with what I have, okay? Anything that you have at home that you can step on or put your hands on will do. From here, what I'm going to do is to keep that back leg straight as it is, but I'm going to add the front leg also being straight. Now you can see possibly, I hope, my back heel is not completely touching the mat and it's not meant to touch the mat. The legs are in a white stride. So I'm just trying to use that to really open the hamstrings. I'm using my blocks as a support and I'm going to try and push firmly into that front foot so the big toe is pressing down. My right hip is moving up towards the skies and I'm going to lengthen the torso forward. I'm not folding yet, okay? Lengthening the torso, sending hips back. You may feel already the opening there in the hamstring. Don't lock your knees ever. You always keep a little bit of softness in the knee area. And then after another breath, I'm going to keep the torso long like it is and with the support of my left block or left side, something that you have, I'm going to twist over to the right. I'm pushing my support away so I'm not sinking into that prop and I'm lifting my heart up and twisting to the skies, okay? Still my right hip is trying to go up and back. Another breath, you can always gaze down and drop the neck. I like that version a lot, so I don't strain my neck. Good, and then I'm bringing that right hand down and I'm going to do a little change. That back foot, now I'm going to bring it forward a little bit and I'm going to turn the heel in and down. So now my stride is shorter than before and I can set my back heel down to the floor, okay, or the mat. And with that, I'm going to lengthen the spine again. And this time leading with my heart, I'm going to lengthen the trunk over the front leg. This that does not have to look this way, okay? You can keep the blocks or anything that you have underneath in the highest of the settings and stay a little taller, which will help your spine a lot, okay? So all of them are really good. We are working the legs a lot, the extension and opening in the chest and the trunk. And I'm trying to send my right hip back all the time. Like if someone is pulling from my outer hip, okay? <clears throat> Take another breath. Good. And then from there, I'm going to bend my front knee, lift my back heel again. And before I go back to down dog, I'm going to twist over to the right one more time. This time, my front knee is completely bent into a lunge. Okay. Inhaling. Exhale, touch down, downward facing dog. Feel the sensations in one side and the other, comparing. Good, and then from there, we'll go into the second side, okay? Left leg goes up to the skies. Left foot comes forward in between the hands. And instead of bending completely the front leg, I'm going to straighten my back leg more. My heel is not touching down, but I'm going to grab my support so I can push into my left foot and make my front leg more straight. It's a wide stride this time, okay? Good, with my blocks or anything else supporting, I'm going to now start sending the left hip back, lengthening the torso forward. 
and take a few breaths here. We are not folding yet. <laughs> Good, and keeping the torso long, hips moving back. I'm now using my support under the right side to twist over to the left. I'm still sending that left outer hip towards the back of my mat. And I'm trying to twist the chest up to the skies. You can look down. Remember, we don't want to collapse in the right shoulder. So I'm pushing my prop away, okay? Make sure the left big toe mount is really connected to your mat. Don't let it lift. Good, then I'm slowly returning. And after I'm doing that, I'm going to now bring that back foot a little closer turn the heel in and down. And from there, yes, I'm going to fold a little more lengthening through the spine, left hip back, and then folding over the leg. Like I said before, if this is not working or it's too intense in your hamstring, you stay a little higher and you bend your front knee a little more, okay? Good. Take a couple of breaths. We are taking a few sequences today to do some stretches and power the body a little bit, even though it's a short session, but it gives us a good opportunity to make the blood flow all over. Good, from there, I'm going to lift myself again, lift my back heel, I'm swinging a little bit that foot back so I can bend my front knee for the last portion of the sequence. I'm putting my right hand down. Of course, if you need the support, put it there and then push the floor away, twist over to your left, let that left hip drop and open the heart. Release through the left hand. Let's go back downward facing dog. One big breath. Bend the knees, draw the belly in, gaze forward, take a big step or hop or jump to the top of the mat. Inhaling for half a lift, opening the collarbones wide. Exhaling, we fold. Stay there for a moment. Let the head become really heavy. Weight of your body moving towards your toes. If you need support under the hands, bring those blocks or pillows or anything else. Don't lock your knees. And then we'll bring the hands to the hips, roll the shoulders back so the elbows go up, spread your toes, lengthen through the heart, and we come all the way up to standing. Ah, good. Let's shake it a little bit here. Good. And then we'll send arms up overhead, catch your right wrist with your left hand, pull, and tilt over to your left. This is what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you. We try to keep the chest facing forward. I'm letting my hips go to the side a little so I feel that stretch. And if you want, you can look down if the neck feels funny. Then slowly coming back and we switch sides, lifting and going over to the second side, maybe letting the hips go to the side a little, turning the chest up. Slowly coming back, release from there. I'm coming back to the top of my mat. Last mini thing that we do here. I'm going to now inhale, send my arms up overhead. Imagine you're going to push the skies up. So I'm turning my palms, I'm pressing them up. And then from there, I'm lengthening, opening the heart, sending my arms back and clasping my hands behind the lower back. If you need a belt to do that because the hands don't get together, totally fine. Grab a strap or a scarf or anything and you pull from there and you make it wider, okay? Good, from here, I'm going to lean onto my left foot and send my right foot back just a step. Okay, for the ones, the ones who want to come with me, we straighten from here, we lift and lead from the heart center, and then I'm going to start leaning forward and lifting the right leg. Maybe we lift it just one millimeter or one inch, maybe it's a little more, don't worry, don't lock your left knee, try to keep the hips facing down. 
any time that you are there, it's fine. Just stay steady through the breath. And then we slowly return and release it and shake it a little. Awesome. Last side. One more time. We inhale, we send the arms up. We turn the palms like if we are pushing the skies. Then from there, I'm lengthening, opening, feel that heart, lungs expanding. And I'm again lacing fingers behind. This time I'm going to try and put the opposite thumb on top. If you remember, it's going to feel funny, okay? And then I'm lengthening through the arms. Of course, if you have a scarf instead, you take that. I'm leaning onto my right side. Left foot goes back. Heart is leading and I'm going into that flying mode, we call it warrior three. This is a warrior that leads with the heart, with love, compassion, and kindness. So if you need to get out of it or it feels like it's too much, you use compassion and you can always do the shape here, touching with the toes, okay? Or going like a millimeter up. Do not worry, this is a big hip strengthener. Good, then we slowly return. Shake it a little, excellent. I'm facing you guys. So from here we can widen the feet, toes out and move towards a squat. If you can, you come into this squat. Many times I recommend rolling a blanket. You can place it under your heels. It can be very useful if your heels don't touch down and you feel a little unstable or you can add a block. I'm gonna show it show you, you can always add a block or something to sit on and the shape is the same. You're practicing the same thing for the body and you have some extra uh, steadiness <laughs> added, okay? Good. Lift the heart, send the shoulders back a little. Let's take a couple of breaths. Beautiful. Then I'm going to use my hands. I'm pretty close to the floor. So I'm going to use my hands to help myself come to a seat, extend the legs, wiggle them a little, and then I'm coming onto my back. Okay. From my back, I'm going to bring my knees both to the chest, rock a little bit side to side. Good, you can add a few circles there if you want with your knees going one way and the other. And then we're going to open the arms to a cactus shape or T letter if you have the space and let both knees drop over to your right. Let the upper back drop to earth, chin to the left. Just a few breaths here before we end. And in this one, we invite the body to become really heavy and drop to earth. Hello, Jolie. Good. Then we slowly return both knees back to center. If you want, you can hug them into the chest, rock a little before switching sides, okay? And if you don't have space like me, I'm shifting my hips a little bit to the right so I can take both my knees over to the left, relax the upper back again, head towards the right, unless your neck is hurting, of course. And we soften here for a moment. Head is heavy, face is soft, Breath is steady and calm, and you let the weight of your body affect this twist and this opportunity to slowly move towards a rest. Okay, we are almost at the end. Then we'll return with both knees back to center, and we are going to cross right shin in front of the left one, Bring the shins towards you or your feet if you can. Just stay there for a moment, one breath. And then you switch left shin on top, same thing, pressing the shins towards you. It looks a little bit like a cross-legged seat, but on your back. Good, from there we are going to extend legs, release the arms, drop the head, soften everything. 
and we have just a few seconds there to rest. If you do have the time, of course, to stay there a little longer, please do. We are at the official time of closure, but it can be a good opportunity for at least a minute or two to sing and receive the benefits of the practice, okay? If you, of course, have to run out and keep moving, then roll on to your side, sit up. And I appreciate you guys very much. I hope to see you again for the next 30 minutes uh, sequencing and uh, session together. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.